I don't even have a remix. <laughs> so I'm going to talk real slow. I'm not even in a hurry. I, I gave them the, a time that I wanted to be up because I'm usually late. Now I'm early. So I was going to read just a verse, but I'm going to read a few. And then after I read the few, then we're going to stand up and I'm going to read the one. See, see how we extended that? I'm going to read the whole story, then I'm going to let you stand up and read the one. Is that good? It ain't like you ain't got time to do this. <laughs> uh, Matthew 8, and I'm going to begin at uh, verse number uh, 22, and I'll stop when I think I should. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he, Jesus, went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they, the disciples, came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and, the, and they ceased and there was a calm. And then Jesus said unto them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid, one to saying one to another, What manner of man is this, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? Now I ask you to stand as we turn our attention to verse number 22 for tonight. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launch forth. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. As the Holy Spirit will guide I want to share from the thought and the theme, it's time to cross over. Let us pray. God, I thank you for every person who, have, who has gathered in this place tonight. I thank you, God, for the faithful choir members and musicians who have assembled media who's at their place and the greeters who have a smile on their face those who occupy a place in this house let it not be in vain but let us all say in our hearts we have come tonight wanting to know is there a word from the Lord speak Holy Spirit as only you can speak to me and speak through me so that all that has been assigned tonight, O oh God, will bless those it's meant to bless and will help those who need the help. But whatever you do, God, don't let your word return unto the void. So God, now take and consecrate me so that the words of my mouth, but the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are our strength and our holy redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. It's nice to see um, a few people hanging out tonight. I, um, since I got a minute, I said to myself, Lord, uh, uh, church has changed. 
and um, I don't know if I'll change with it. One lesson I learned in, in seminary is that when you have the word of God and you're dealing with God Almighty, you don't need any um, fanfare. God is just entertaining all by himself. I see the churches nowadays, the 21st century church, they have spotlights. I can't tell if they're in a concert hall. Because we have, and, and my concern is, that we are raising a, raising a generation that needs to see things. And theology requires us to believe things. The, that's why you have to preach the word rather than just see a word. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And so I want you to know in 2018, I will not be putting those lights in the church. And we won't have no dimming and we won't have no stage. God is the center of the attention. Um, but nothing that God does or that uh, the world does is taking God by surprise. He is the creator of all things. Did you know that at this uh, time of the year that uh, it would be very hard to find a, an accountant? Because for, for, um, for most people, or businesses, companies, this is the end of the fiscal year. Now, uh, it doesn't have to go uh, with the calendar, but it, 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 it can happen quarterly. But for the majority of, of businesses and corporations, it is the close of the year and accountants are running to get the numbers together. They, they will get together the balance sheets. They will be looking at their lost and their profits or profits and loss. They will be looking at the cash flow. They will uh, look at what they gain and they will, they will use that data to kind of set a road map for what they're going to do in the upcoming year. They will look at it analytically and um, they will determine their next year's budget. They, they will look at trends that are happening, trends that are starting, and trends that have ended. And, and they will also turn that paperwork over to their investors that they can see if they want to continue to invest or maybe even have some input in their investment. But they're going to take that paperwork and they're going to determine what to do in the coming year to make next year better than the last. And that, that's, that's what we do on watch night. As we come to the end of the year, we become our own personal accountants. We start looking back over yesterday and start making budget cuts on our lives. We, 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 will, we will start looking to see what was good, what was 
best, what was not needed, where, did, where, where was there an overkill. And, and we won't use numbers, but we'll use phrases as the year goes down. We'll say things like, next year I'm not going to do that. Next year I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go, I'm not going over there. Next year I'll make sure I'll, I'll spend more time in this place. Next year, I'm not going to hang with this crowd, but next year, I'm going to go over to this crowd. Next year, I'm not going to play as much. Next year, I'm going to study a little harder. Next year, I'm going to make sure I get to work with. What we're really doing is that we're trying to organize our lives so that we can be better in the next year because we're trying to be successful. And really, what we're going to be doing is that we, too, will make a page. We will be analyzing our health and see what we can do to be healthier. We'll look at our stewardship and see what we can do to be better stewards over our money and our property. We'll look at our careers and see what we have to do to climb a corporate ladder or make the business better. And we'll look at our spiritual life to find out to make sure we're closer to God. Because we're coming to the end of the year and we want to be successful. You're trying to figure out what in the world is she talking about? This is what Jesus has done with his disciples. He says it's time to go to the other side. See, see, because he has done and an, an, a he has done an account of his service. He has done an account of all that he has done thus far, and he also has become aware of his mission. By the time we get to this, this text, he, 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 he has done some things. He has, he has healed a leper. He, he, has, he has healed, according to Mark, a, a man that was paralyzed. He has preached in the synagogue. He has been tempted by the devil. He has gathered all his disciples. And yet he also understands that his mission is to be a savior to both Jews and Gentiles. But when he takes an account, Count of where he's traveled, who he's helped, and whom he has served, and whom he has introduced himself to. If it had not been for one centurion soldier, he says, everybody that I have helped has looked just like me. They're Jews. They're in Galilee, Capra, uh, Capernaum. And he said, but my task is not only to uh, help save my own people or God's chosen people, but to save all of God's people. And when he looked at his disciples who looked like Jews, looked at himself and, be and became a Jew, he said, it's time for us to expand the business and it's time to go to the other side because there's more to the kingdom than just what's here watch him now because on the other side of the lake is a place called Jesseres uh, 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 and over there guess what Gentile region, Greeks uh, who, who have their own little region, their own little country, their own little government. And all he and the Jews have been doing has been hanging out at Westphalia. They didn't go out in the street. They just recycled on nothing but Christians while the unsaved never would come to know. Y'all don't hear me that we always uh, just want to recycle saved people while unsaved people need to know who Jesus is. It's time to go to to the other side. Whether it be to, to grow God's kingdom or to grow us, we have to learn and we have to embrace if we're going to be better in 2018, there's some principles that we're going to have to accept that is being practiced here. So let's go to the other side to a people you don't know. Let, 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 let's go where there's some Gentiles. Let, let's go to, to some people that don't look like you, don't sound like you, don't think like you, don't believe like you, 
but need to know me. Let, let, let's go where you're, not, where you're not so comfortable in familiar surroundings. Let's, let, let's, go, let's go into the hard part of the places you call projects and ghettos. Let, let's take our ministry to the hood. Let's, let's go to the street. Let's take the roof off the building. Let, let, because if you're going to grow God's kingdom, and if you and I are going to grow spiritually, that before the new year comes in, we're going to have to learn to be, com to be discomfort hanging around everything that's always familiar. I'm trying to help somebody here. We have a saying in the church that you can expect to get different results doing the same old thing. You, 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 it, 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 may, it may not be anything wrong with the program that you do, but you may have to change the attitude in which you do it. Or it may not, it may be something wrong, it may not be nothing wrong with the attitude, but the program that you're comfortable with has to change. And so if we're going to be better in 2018, and this I do know, if you're going to be better in 2018, that there's some things that you're going to have to get, for, get unfamiliarized with because if you're going to be something new, you're going to have to do something new. And so you, need to, you and I need to start looking on our list. And there's some people that we're going to have to leave behind, not because there's something wrong with them, but these people keep us locked down that we can't grow there's some places we're going to have to leave behind because every time we go there we fall back to become what we're familiar with there's some habits we're going to have to let go because every time we grab hold of those habits we end up being the same people we were on last year there's some leaders we're going to have to stop listening to because every time we listen to them we don't get better we get worse but if you're going to go into 2018 you can't go in there with the same baggage from 2017 but change the garment change the clothing change your attitude because new things can be unfamiliar always want to hang around what's comfortable that's what makes change difficult because when God calls us to change and be better we have to leave what we know Stop doing the familiar. So as they're traveling along this road or, or sailing on this lake, <laughs> the rain comes. And, and, and they travel at night. And the disciples are fishermen. And they usually fish it at night because they, 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 they weren't prepared for this storm. And they would fish at night not only because of with how the fish swim, but also how the weather moves. It was, it was uncommon on this lake to have this kind of storm in the nighttime. But, but, but they didn't know what they were doing or they really didn't understand who they were with because they were raised the question when it's all over what manner of man this is but now you should be able to forecast a storm that when you're trying to better yourself and you got Jesus with you helping to better you you should be prepared to know that opposition gonna rise up against you. That storms are gonna come as long as Jesus and you are moving into a better you and in a new you, you should anticipate that you have made somebody mad and they're going to bring a storm on your life. Opposition, not that they don't, not that they want to be saved, but they don't want you to get saved. Not that they want your blessing, they just don't want to see you get the blessing. You can forecast a storm is coming if you and Jesus are on the same 
same ship going in the same direction. That's why they used to say you're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or going back to a storm because you can forecast a storm when you know who you're riding with. <sighs> but this is what happened. They were ready to go back because water got into the boat. Now, you, you, some of y'all won't understand this, but many of us will if, if black history is working here. You're on a boat and it's filling up with water, which means the boat that you on is about to sink. That's not the part that's scary. And the waves, the image is that you could get a surfboard and ride a wave in this storm. That, that's not the scary part. The scary part is that if the boat tilt, you can't swim. That's why they said, you're going to let us perish. Because they said, if this boat tilts over and all that water and my non-swimming self, I'm going down. And so what they were overcome with was not water, but they were overcome with fear. And whenever you begin to move into a different direction, whenever God is trying to elevate you into something better, whenever you are going to change and your life is going to be changed, there is a, a propensity in us to cast some fear and be afraid to move. But the one thing I give them credit for that when you find that you are in a place of fear, the disciples had one lifeline and one word, Jesus. I, I, just, I just come to help you right now. It, the, the name still works. Whenever you find yourself in a place of fear and fright, all you have to do is remember one name, Jesus. You may not be able to remember the scripture that trouble don't last always because when you're afraid, it's hard to remember what thus saith the Lord. When you're afraid, it's kind of hard to forget you're more than a conqueror. But when you are afraid, you can remember Jesus because he is still a heavy load Sarah. He is always burden bearer. He's always your rescue in time of trouble. You can call Jesus in the nighttime. He doesn't slumber nor sleep, but he is a way out of no way. He will make a pathway through your tunnel. All you have to do is know his name and his name is Jesus. He casts out fear just like he casts out doubt. He put light in darkness and he'll put a bright light in the midst of your troubles. Preach with. Woo. So, 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 to get to the other side, if you're going to be better, you're going to have to let go of the familiar. And you can't walk into the new year afraid. So I'm trying to tell you. He said, but then, you can't go in without faith. See, see what really happened to the disciples, they couldn't see their way through. They didn't know how they were going to make it to the other side. They, you ever been there? That you're in a place you just didn't know how you were going to make it. There, there, there are folk who, who have, 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 have been in health situations that they didn't know how they were going to make it. People who have, who have uh, tried every 
counselor in the, for their marriage and they still don't know how they're going to make it. That, that, that they have more bills than they have income and they're trying to figure out how am I going to make it? You ever been there where, where you, you just couldn't see your way through? You couldn't see help coming from any source. You couldn't find a friend who could help you in your time of need. There wasn't a, a prescription for your pain. There wasn't a counselor for your troubles. <laughs> All you knew that not even the horoscope would give you any good news. You tried to pick up a clover and it loved you not. Ever been there? But when you can't see him, trust him. And when you can, and when you don't know the way, know him. Watch this. He says to them, after he comes to see, with peace be still. I kind of see Jesus. He, you know, Jesus is cool. Yeah, yeah, he really is. He's a cool dude. I believe when, when, they, when, when they woke Jesus, well, first of all, let me tell you why Jesus was asleep. Since I got time. <laughs> let, let me tell you how cool he is. Now, now check this out. <laughs> he's in a ship or boat. I think it's a ship because I believe he's below. I don't know nothing about boats. And y'all can give me an education in 2018. I don't want to hear it in 2017. <laughs> I got time, Russell. Watch Jesus. I'm going to tell you how cool he is, right? Now, there's a storm. And, and, and uh, uh, Brother Pinckney, that boat trip is getting ready to pay off. When you're in a storm, and the wind is blowing and water is coming in the boat. I've been there. I have not missed a thing. I've been here. If you don't get sick, the boat is actually going like this. Don't y'all miss it. And then it adds water to the ship. What they called a storm wasn't a storm for Jesus. The father just put him back in the womb. <laughs> and what they called danger, it was his daddy just rocking him. <laughs> y'all missed that. What you call a trial, God says, no, that's your strength. <laughs> what you call a mistake, he said, no, that's your miracle. What you call a setback, he said, no, I'm setting you up. That, that, that God is in the, and, I, and they say, they say, master, how can you sleep? He said, because my daddy knows how tired I am, and he's just going to rock his baby. You call it a storm, but the Lord said, no, it's my father giving me the rest I need. And so when they wake him up, he got a little attitude. He mad. Come on, y'all. You in a good sleep? You, th you three eyes deep. You dreaming now in color. I was telling the guests the other day, well, I, I have some good dreams. My wife, no, I got time. My wife don't like for me to keep the TV on, but I like the TV on. TV get in my dreams. I have had World War II in my backyard. Snow and everything. I mean, I'm running. I got machine guns and I'm ducking. I, I, Cause it's on TV and it's in my dream. And I don't want to wake up. I, don't wake me up until the gun is pointed at me. Then I gotta get up. So he get he get, he get up and 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 they, they said they said, Master, Master. And I believe for a minute the humanity came. He said, What you want? Man, you gonna let us die out here? So he get up, he said, man, I don't believe these, I don't believe these boys. I'm, if I'm asleep, 
then they should have enough sense to know if I'm going to sleep through it, it must be all right. So he gets up. He don't say nothing. He just walk, he just walk over. Cause they, and he look out and he, he said, peace be still. Then he goes back. And as he walking back, he probably looked and he said, man, where's your faith? And he goes back to sleep. And this is the part that got me. And I, I can't take credit for this revelation. I have to give it to my friend, Dr. Ralph West. The faith should have happened in the text. You should, they should have known that they were going to make it. Even in the storm. Because the Lord said, let us go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't y'all miss it. If the Lord said, let us go, then the Lord is going to see you through. Y'all miss it. If the Lord says you're going to make it, I don't care how much hell or how water you go through, you're going to make it. If the Lord says you're able, I don't care what other folks say about you, you're able. If the Lord says it's going to be all right, I don't care what the doctor or the bank says, it's going to be all right. If the Lord said that's your husband or wife, I don't care how bad the argument is, you're going to get through that one. If the Lord said it, because the Lord can't lie, if the Lord told told you it's going to be all right then you might that's why they say you don't have to wait till the battle is over you can shout right now if the lord told you you're more than a conqueror then act like it if the lord said you're not the victim but the victor act like it. if the lord said you can do all things through christ then do all things if the lord said you have all he, you have all power in your hand that was in here then act like you're the powerful one if the lord says you're the head and not the tail. Don't turn your back and act like you're below, but act like you're above. If the Lord said it, if the Lord said it, that's all I need to know. Because I walk by faith, and faith comes by hearing, and I need to hear what the Lord has to say. <laughs> If we are going to cross over, if you have done your math, that's all I'm trying to tell you. If you have decided that you are going to be better, let me help you. If you decided that there's one habit you're going to break, One friend you're going to release. One problem you're going to fix. Your relationship with God you're going to mend. If you're going to do it, you cannot do it doing what you're doing now. Because you're getting ready to chart a new territory. Imagine, if you will, when people have the wrong habits, a habit, when developed and becomes a part of you, means that now it has a hold of you and it has become an addiction. Addiction happens because now you have been doing something so long that you are far removed from the sobriety that you once knew. And being sober or removed of a habit is now unfamiliar. That I've been doing and living like this so long 
that what once may have been, now when I see it and make it a goal, it's no longer familiar. I had a real bad habit um, growing up that my wife prayed over. I drank Pepsi Colas as if there was no other drink in the world. And I truly believe this. I believe I was the creator of the Big Gulp. I, I really do. I, I, I say that because I remember when the fountain drink came to 7-Eleven. And we used to play uh, basketball in Fort Washington. And we would have to pass the 7-Eleven. And they only had the 16 ounce. And, and um, I, would, we would, I would drink one going into the game. And then I would drink, I would finish playing. I would only play two games, two and a half games. And the only reason why I only played two games, because when the brothers got hot, they started cussing and I couldn't do that. Everything was a foul. I said, I can't play no more. They stopped running. I go home. But on the way I stopped at 7 Eleven, I drank me two more 16 ounces. I drank so many that I stopped putting ice in both of them. Because I took it home one day with the ice in it. And when you pour out the soda, you really don't get 16 ounces. I mean, I was addicted. I'm just trying to tell you, that's an addict. When you go home and measure how much soda you got. And you held on to it just to see. And you'll be amazed at how much you cheat yourself with a lot of ice. I got time. Y'all don't understand, I got time. <laughs> and eventually, the 16 ounce, they got the big gulp. And when they went to the big gulp, I bought those, just like I bought the 16 ounce. And I did the same thing. Actually, the big gulp became the 16 ounce with ice in it. And the 16 ounce became a 12 ounce with ice in it. And then they, they, they blew my mind. They came up with the super big gulp. Now I'm telling the truth here. I drank so, you know you drinking a lot of soda when your wife got to go pray on your habit. Now, I don't need to say no more. She, she started praying. And I tried to quit. I was having Pepsi withdrawal. This, this, this is true. I was sneaking around the corner, <laughs> sipping soda like I was doing a drug. But there was a, a time in my life that I did not drink Pepsi at all. But now it had become an addiction. In order for me to change for health reasons, I had to let go of what was familiar. And that's a small habit. And I had to do it and not be afraid, even amongst my Pepsi buddies, to say, no, thank you. Y'all think, y'all missing, I'm trying to be light, but I need you to go heavy. Because we have things in our lives that we really have already said we don't want to do in the next year. And whatever it is that we're trying to change to make ourselves better, it is deeper and probably more difficult or equally as difficult as it is when I tried to give up Pepsi. But I had a praying wife. And she called on Jesus. <laughs> And when she called on Jesus, Jesus got a hold of me. Y'all ain't hear me. And let me tell you how he moved me one day. I stopped drinking it before I knew I had stopped. Y'all, 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 y'all missed it. That I, that the Lord crossed me over tenderly. That, that he had taken the taste right out of my mouth. <laughs> 
that because because now I was willing at some point he eased me to a place where I wouldn't be afraid to say no where I wouldn't be afraid to do something that I wasn't familiar with that I would have enough faith that once he removed me from it I can't y'all still ain't listening to me right now there are some things in your life that you want to change but the reason why you cannot change is because you are afraid of what you're not familiar with because we are afraid of what people might say because we are afraid that we don't have enough faith to get us there but the Lord is in the boat with you that God is right there in the struggle that the Jesus who calmed the sea that day will calm the raging things in our lives and if we're going to cross over in the next year we better call on the one who is with us today tomorrow and forevermore we better learn to call the name Jesus I hear the lightning flash I see the lightning flash I hear the thunder roar but I feel sin breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of Jesus tell me fight on because we can't get there without him it's time to change get rid of your excuses let's stop playing church Don't worry about what others might think. I forgot to tell you, when they got to the other side, there was a man there. He was filled with demons. People were afraid of him. And people kept him locked down in familiar places. And people lost faith. And when he came to the other side, there was one thing he knew. He knew who was on the boat. And he called his name. And when he called his name, Jesus called him back. When Jesus left that side, a man who was demon possessed was now Holy Ghost filled. He didn't know a scripture. He didn't have a church home. He couldn't tell you the theology of the Pharisees, but he knew who could fix him. He knew who could change him. Jesus. 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 Don't go into the new you without Jesus because chances are it's just another resolution you'll break don't go into the new year thinking you're going to come out better going by yourself Don't think that you're going to just rage, you're going to calm your raging seas by yourself. Jesus said it's time to go to the other side. And he meant just what he did. If they're going to make it, I need to get in the boat with them. How many of you are 
walking through life without him. I'm talking about coming to church attendance. A whole lot of folk come to church and still walking. They walked in here without him. And they're going to leave without him. There's a difference. Don't get it, don't get it, don't get it confused. How many of us, when we cross over, know that we're crossing in with the Lord at our side? I've come to understand now, I ain't got time to play anymore. Making sure people are saved in 2018. Because if, we, if 2017 is any indication of what is about to come, you, you can count on this, brothers and sisters. Your government ain't going to help you. And your health insurance may run out. Job security is on the blink. Or oh, you don't have to believe me. So you don't want to, and I don't want to go into 2018 all by myself. But let the Lord go with you. And so as we come to the close of this sermon, it's time to cross over. I just want to make sure you have company with you. I hope you're comfortable.